Alright, well, today's the day. Uh, I've already actually did, done the uh, passenger side yesterday. And so it's 2002 Dodge Dakota 4x4. Switching to 2003 uh, Durango 4x4. Um, or probably 2 wheel drive 2. Um, uh, brakes up front, so the calipers and everything changed to two piston calipers instead of one. I was having a lot of problems with this truck. Uh, the braking in the front just kept warping rotors, and you'll see the difference once I get it all apart. Um, and previous videos actually show the difference too. So, uh, first thing to do, we got the wheels chalked at the back there. I got the parking brake on, and then just get the truck on jack stands. I got a jack, I got some wood up there because you have to put the jack under the lower control arm or else it'll just fall on you. Um, but you'll see that in a little bit. So first we'll just get the wheel off and go from there. Alright, so I've taken the wheel off already. Uh, I got the caliper off the caliper. On this particular model it's just held on by two bolts back here which are also your slide pins and uh, they get really bad rust in there, you gotta clean them out all the time. Anyways, so that's hooked off, so it's not hanging it. I need to reuse the brake line here. I'm taking off the tie rod at this end. All that really happened was, um, sorry to get ahead of myself, forgot the video, but I, it, it was up inside here. Take the nut off, then basically, Persuade it out with this. Get yourself a good hand sledge and basically get it right there. And some people think, oh, that's not going to work, that thing's really in there. But spray a little penetrating oil around the surface where it contacts the bolt for the tie rod and uh, the stud there, and it'll come out. I live in Canada, there's tons, tons of rust buildup on everything when you work on these trucks and cars up here so it comes out it's the same with the ball joints the ball joints work just the same so that'll be the uh, the first step I took anyway to getting this knuckle off we gotta take this steering knuckle off and then uh, and that's pretty much it once that's off you're home free so we'll continue on here well uh, yeah <laughs> one more thing the biggest problem I find with doing this job when I did the other side was this getting those cotter pins out. You see the little loop there, that's the one eyelet. Big problem getting those out. Yesterday I basically had to drill one out because both ends broke off. It's just rusted all in there. Upon further inspection I can see that I got a slight leak in my outer seal of my CV shaft. So that'll have to be addressed sometime. But uh, yeah, and obviously my shocks have seen better days. They need to be replaced too. But for now, we're doing this brake swap, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Well, once again, I'm struck by the cotter pin issue. If you ever installed all this stuff, didn't use like I prefer to try and get if I can stainless steel cotter pins that way they come out again. But once again, upper ball joint, cotter pin was seized, broke as soon as I touched it practically. Bottom was the same. This one for the, for the uh, hub, luckily, was good. And one thing you can do to get these out, if they're stuck, is basically grab hold them with some pliers or side cutters. And then, while you're grabbing it, you just give it a tap, like this, and it comes right out. This is... <laughs> be hanging on to it though but yeah it comes right out if you ever have a stuck one you just can't get it out so that's a good tip there so I've already, I'll just, what I'm gonna do is take the nut off the top nut off the bottom which I've basically already done and then I'm gonna have to uh, drill out the cotter pin holes again or, or I'll try to punch them out but if that doesn't work drill them out get them out of the way and then we can start reinstalling this again all right let's get to it now here's a little tip when you're working away on your vehicle, try to keep things neat. And when you're using this many different sockets and things, it's easy to get them mixed up. So, what I like to try to do is put the stuff, like, well, here I have to use a board under my jack stand, so I put everything under there. And, well, this stuff's a bit messy, but, you know, what can you do? <laughs> 
So anyway, we're down to, uh, let's see, I didn't really take too much else off, so still getting those off. Took out the spindle bolt for the hub. Uh, that's 36 mil on this truck, Dakota. I think it was 36. 32, sorry, 32 mil. So that's out, comes out. This comes off first, well your cotter pin then that. It's got a washer. Then the nut comes off and then you have a another washer basically a, for the jam nut. So that comes all out and then once I get the nuts off all this knuckle, it should be sliding out. So Alright, so what I'm gonna show you guys is how this works basically. Um, there's your upper. So what we're gonna do is get that lock free. Actually what you should do, I got keep the nut on the bottom. Just so in case it all drops it doesn't fall on your foot or something. You take this and you give it a good whack the upper ball joint. she goes. So there's the upper ball joint out. And I wasn't even hitting that hard. Um, the axle actually is already out. It's loose, surprisingly. And then all I'm going to do is do the same. I'll do the same to the bottom. Take it, turn the wheel a bit if I can, and it jacks in the way. That's alright. The bottom seems to take more, more abuse. Well, you get the picture. It'll come out shortly. All right, so like I said, just I beat that lower joint a bit. Not too much, not too crazily hard, but it came off. So here is the old Dakota one. And this, this is where I seem to always have problems, is right here. It always, I didn't have this off actually that long ago, but in here the pads just catch and they just don't seem to do too well. So, anywho, we'll, uh, we'll take this hub out and I'll show you how to do that. Basically, I just loosen these off loose, like in my other video, and then drive them down with the with the uh, impact hammer. All right, so the air hammer. Well, this might be a problem you guys might encounter. Like I said, I had both these stuck. The top one I managed to wangle loose. A little bit of heat on it. Penetrating oil the bottom. Not so lucky, but I did get it empty. Just had to drill it, which took a while. You see all the filings that came up. It's crazy sometimes. Both both lowers had to be drilled out. So, uh, so at this point, basically I'm gonna put I already got the hub back in. Um, pretty much just take the hub, flip it over, put the bolts in, zip they're tight. They'll have to be torqued down once it's on the truck. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll continue on the assembly here of the steering knuckle back onto the ball joints. One thing to note when you're putting this back together, 
We have these slide clips for the brake pads. They have little tabs at each end right here that keep it still. What I do is I bend them a little bit because at this end it's really loose usually. Like you can move this. You don't want it really to move so what I do is I kind of stake that end inwards so that now it's stationary. I even bend the actual uh, I bend this part even just so that it's tight when it goes on. Alright, so that's our 2003 Durango swap. All that together. Well, took it out for a test drive. It's running like awesome. My brakes seem real tight, like real good. Brakes evenly. Checked it just now for for uh, leaks. Don't see any leaks. And uh, yeah, seems to be good. They're steaming a little bit when I got back, but that's just uh, all the all the fluid and everything, like brake clean and everything else I sprayed on there, and all the uh, stuff that comes with them when you buy them from fat when you get them from from the parts place. It's got a film on the rotors that will burn off usually on the first drive around. I try to get most of it off with uh, brake clean and a little bit of sandpaper but still usually smokes a bit. But yeah, no rubbing on the rim, seems to drive straight, no grinding noises, it's perfect. So um, I definitely recommend this swap. I'll, I'll probably talk about it again in the near future, I'll let you guys have an update, see if it's still working good. but. Yeah, it wasn't too hard of a swap. The biggest issue was uh, getting those cotter pins out. I did put in a, I put in bearing on the other side. We'll see if that goes good. All right. So yeah, I did put in a bearing from the the wheel bearing actually in there now on the passenger side is from the auto records that came with the knuckle that I bought um, so this is my old one uh, from the Dakota I don't know if you can hear it and it also had I noticed when I took mine out you can see those all those springs I believe those are for the seal that's in there to keep the grease cell in. They were just all kind of unwound, sitting there, just unwound, coming out. So I took a look at that, and it hasn't. I don't know how long it's been on there. It's been on there since I've had it, so I changed it. The one that came from the records seemed tight, no noise. It had Timkin written on it, as a brand new, looked like bearing, less rust than the one I got on mine. So I swapped it out seen good on the test drive so we'll see but all right that's how you do her if you guys like this video go ahead and like it favorite it whatever you want until next time I'll see you guys soon oh and I'll put all the torque specs in the uh, description for this cheers